Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming for this talk. It is the final talk of the PhD intern Longley who is a PhD student in the University of Illinois. Uh, his advisor is Professor Douglas Jones, and the topic of his internship is spatial probability for sound source localization. And without further ado, Long, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Long Le, and um, my presentation today is going to be about the project that I and Ivan um, uh, did over the last three months. Um, so the, the t in the title, I have South localization. So what is South of localization? Um, and it's a problem that given a, mi a microphone array, and there's multiple, um, potentially multiple South source in the environments, um, you're trying to figure out where the South source is coming from. So usually, a microphone array have the x axis um, defined to be pointing toward the source. And then um, the y-axis is the 90 degree from it, and the angle theta is the divide uh, to be the direction from the south source with respect to the x-axis. Um, but one thing to notice is this is not entirely my project. So my project is not about south source localization. It's about spatial probability. So what is spatial probability? Um, and the spatial probability, probability project that we did has um, two, go two main goals. The first thing is to um, replace a point decisions about a, a, the, the direction of arrival, or DOA, with a belief or a distributions um, about the potential DOA. Um, so the idea is to generalize the south of localization problems. But in addition, um, having this belief or distributions can also have additional application in like spatial filtering, for example. Um, and the second goal of our project is we want a single algorithm that's going to be used, applicable for multiple uh, microphone array. So we can either have a four, linear four element Kinex, um, or a circular eight element omnidirectional microphone, um, or a circular um, eight element cardioid microphones. And these are the actual objects, um, and they are imaged in, in here. So the idea is we want to have a single algorithm that's going to rule all these microphones, all right, basically. Um, so that's the goal. And the challenge, uh, we want an algorithm that is fast enough. Um, so we can't afford to spend too much computational time um, just trying to figure out the, the DOA, the direction of arrival, because there's many things that are going to go after it. So we want this to be extremely fast. Um, the second challenge is that the data set is going to be collecting real environments, which is, by, by that I mean like non anechoic chamber. So you're going to have reflection, reverberations, all these kind in the data set that we're going to evaluate the algorithms. Um, and they also be recorded at dif different SNR. Um, so these are the main challenges. Uh, uh, question. Yeah. So uh, the example of the microphone array you just show are all relatively close to each other. Does the algorithm also work on the microphone array? It's just like uh, placed around the room. Around the room means what? Means that maybe there's microphone like a, at the at the like uh, in front of the, the monitor. Maybe there's two microphone at the back of the room. So technically, when you say microphone array, we understand something yeah. which is compact. Okay. Right. Place so it close together to certain distance and mechanically tied together because. To microphones, you have way more serious problems with coxyphonization, knowing the distance with precision of millimeters, etc., etc. So those are out of scope. Right. Yeah. But that's still a very good question. No, we didn't look at that. We only look at globally spaced microphone. And I forget to mention, but there's also a front-to-back microphone um, in the data set, but we don't have the sample of that device here. Um, so they are all tightly packed together. Um, so. What are the algorithms that people already have developed um, so far? Um, I'm going to go through all of, these, all of them right now. And the most common one is probably the um, generalized cost correlations. 
um, with phase trans phase normalize phase normalizations or GCC fan. Um, and it's basically this is the main equation that defines these algorithms. Um, so why is the observations from microphone K? Why K is observation from microphone K? Why L is observation from my microphone L? Um, and you just take them and correlate them by some delay in frequency domain and normalize by the magnitude. So you take out the magnitude of the, the magnitude information now completely. Um, and that's going to give you some um, GCC um, measure over the delay for a particular pair. Now, if your microphone array has more than two pairs, you're going to have to find some way to combine all the pairs together. And one way to do this is you use the um, steering vector information to estimate the theoretical delay for a hypothesized angle theta, and then plug that into this function. And that's what it's doing here. And then sum on, over all the pair and normalize. Um, so I talk about probability, spatial probability. Um, but for now, let, let's just stick with um, a function, uh, a log likelihood function over the spatial angle theta. Um, and I, I will show later how to convert from this log likelihood function into a spatial probability properly. Um, but for now, please stick with this. Um, for all algorithms, we're going to define some log likelihood functions like this. Um, the next most well-known algorithm is probably music. Um, and essentially, it's um, this idea about um, having a noon space that is octagonal to a noise space, the signal subspace octagonal to the noise subspace. Um, and the subspace are derived from the data correlation matrix denoted here RY. And US is the signal subspace of this um, data correlation matrix RY. Um, one thing from the literature that I learned is that um, you can do a much better job if you're, you, you're focusing on free time frequency bins that have rank 1, data, like, um, where this data correlation matrix have rank 1, um, so that your U, US, your, your signal um, dimension is um, dimension 1. Um, and given all of that, and these are, I denote the steering vector for frequency omega and um, spatial angle theta. And you can compute, and, and this, defy, this expression defines the log likelihood function for um, the music algorithms. Um, and we use this, um, this reference number four here to, to efficiently check whether this matrix has rank one, um, rather than doing a full blow SVD, which is way too complicated. Um, and then the next algorithm is um, the common no, well-known ballet algorithms. And again, the log likelihood function is defined by this expression, where I are the steering vector at frequency omega, spatial angle theta. Um, RY is the data correlation matrix. Same thing for MPDR. You just have an additional matrix inversion step, which can be um, highly unstable. But there are numerical tricks to get around this. Um, and you invert that, and that defines the log likelihood functions. Um, one thing I learned from two is that to improve the performance of all these algorithms for circular directional microphone array, um, you want to like throw away um, phase that are from the back of the microphone with respect to a, um, the hypothesized um, incoming angle. And that's um, reference number four here. And that is part of the implementation that I have for those baseline algorithms. Um, they actually help in, improve these algorithms quite significantly. Um, well, but those are the, the well-known algorithms. But what we have here in, in Microsoft is we have an IDO8 algorithms, um, which is um, instantane instantaneous um, direction of arrival. But I would just call an Ivan DO8 um, for IDO8. Um, and this view the problem of DOA estimation as um, L hypo, hypo, LRE hypothesis testing. Um, so what are the hypotheses? The hypotheses are the possible direction of arrival DOA. This denoted by theta i over here. I go from 1 to L. Um, and then instead of using the steering vector directly, what we compute is the, the, the difference in the phase between the steering vector um, for each frequency and each spatial angle. 
Um, and, and before that, we pick one, one steering vector as a reference. So this is the phase difference between K and steering um, element K, or microphone K and microphone one. Um, and this is gonna be the, the, the mean, define the mean of the model, the, the theoretical expected phase difference for the signal. But then we have the data, the data term, and the data term is the same thing, the phase difference between channel K and channel one. And you, ha you have this, um, so I, I'll call this delta, um, small delta, the data um, phase difference, and this is capital delta, is the theoretical phase difference. So you take the, the data-driven phase difference and you compute some distance to the theoretical phase difference. Um, and for now, just ignore the, the modular um, operations, but know that it's just the Euclidean distance between the theoretical and the data-driven terms with some normalizations that um, can be, um, it's not very important for this term. Um, but the, 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 the important thing is there's a mode operation here at first, and I will go into detail later why is this matter in this case that you have this operation here. Um, and these define the log likelihood functions for theta i for these data-driven terms. You do that for all other angles. Um, and you have L hypothesis to test. Um, so, so far I've defined all these log likelihood functions, how to convert them into uh, actual probability. Um, one way is to just normalize them normally. Um, but if you do the submark normalizations, then you have an additional degree of freedom um, sigma here that allow you to adjust your confidence about, you allow you to trade off between your confidence about having a picky, um, a, a, a sharp release about a, a pick from coming from these directions, or allow you to have like um, less picky pick, but like, um, but allow you to see other side of potential side of. If you have like um, last sigma, then potential side of might get suppressed and it will completely disappear. You won't be able to see them, but you will get a very sharply picks um, and the reverse if you had sigma set to small value. So, and, and this is how we convert from block likelihood functions um, to um, actual probability for the, for most all algorithms. Um, so, one thing that by trying different algorithms uh, the first two months is that I, one thing I've learned is that IDOA is much faster, extremely fast compared to the, or the other algorithms. And that's just satisfy one of the first challenge that we have is that we want an algorithm to be really fast. So I think, I think that it's easier to put in more things that is already faster than, than take out things that are slow but already work. So I choose to improve on IDOA too. Um, and um, so in order, the first step into improving this IDOA one is um, and second version of IDOA two. So that I'm gonna have a clear separation between um, signal detections and um, DOA estimations by decoupling this term. So this is the term that we want to compute eventually. The probability of there's a signal, uh, specifically speech coming from this angle theta at a certain frequency omega. Um, just as, um, and that can be decoupled into a term that assuming that everything is speech, then just find the directions of arrival, find the DOA theta angle. And then um, let's leave the, de the, the, de the determinations between speech versus reflection or reverberations for the second terms, assuming that signal coming from a reflect signal is gonna have lower magnitude receive magnitude than the actual direct path signal. Um, and this term is gonna be compared by uh, the VAD that is already part of the audio MSR audio processing pipeline. Um, and then I only have to focus on this term just to compute this term. Um, and, and this is make the problem easier because now I assume everything is signal, whether it's a reflection or reverberation from different directions. I'm, I'm safe because I, I know there's another term that's gonna weigh down the reflections. Um, so given that, I'm gonna focus on this term um, and I'm gonna improve on IDO81. I'm gonna still do um, 
look at this problem as a hypothesis testing problem. Um, we want to come up with a bunch of likelihood model for, for uh, a likelihood model for for each incoming angle theta, and it's very similar to the IDOI that I just present. Um, so you're gonna have a data-driven um, phase and magnitude difference. So um, we want to add magnitude because the intuitions that I want have is that for directional microphone like the um, like the cardioid like this one. Um, you should be able to learn from the magnitude also, um, rather than just the phase. You shouldn't be dropping the phase. Um, so that's why we have the, uh, these additional terms, the, the, the magnitude difference. Um, so the, the reason for the log is that like, there's no particular reason for the log other than that's just going to make this theoretical space that I will show later symmetric around zero. Um, so long, uh, so when, when the two, these two are like equal, then, then they just kind of cancel out. It's just nicer. Um, so I'm, I'm going to denote here um, the capital delta is going to be, again, the theoretical um, both phase and magnitude difference. Um, so subscript P denote phase and subscript M denote magnitude. Um, the same thing here for the data-driven terms. Um, and Here's the, um, I, I, I chopped the normalizations. Um, the reason is like, um, it's gonna be, the motivation is gonna be supported by the result. And it, you, if you put any term here, um, the result gonna be worse. So, um, and like, um, there's no modulation operations. Um, when, and I will get to that in a few, um, one or two slides. Um, so it's just the Euclidean distance between the theoretical and the data driven phase and magnitude difference. So you may ask like why 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 do I propose such a simple model? It's like this so simple why right? the thing is that like it is gonna work. Um, so this is one example of a um, theoretical phase and magnitude difference. So this axis uh, the vector in indices with the four the first four being the phase difference theoretical phase difference um, the later one from five to eight are the magnitude difference in the log domain. So you see, you see that theoretically there should be some amplitude, magnitude uh, variations between different angles. So these are the potential angle. Um, and this is the delta, the theoretical delta is that at, at one particular frequency is 1000 hertz. Um, just say it's a sample for you to visualize the space. And so now we have a data terms that's gonna be a vector the same length vector, you're gonna match them, this vector across these dimensions to every single possible theoretical line. Um, and the, the one that have the highest, lowest distance gonna win. Um, yeah, so, so now it's the, um, the additional improvement that I propose over IDO8 one. So in IDO8, um, you do, um, you do, you remember that's the, the, the modulation 2 pi that's gonna bring the two closer before you actually do the, um, the, the distance calculations. And the reason for that is because if you, if, if the, the, the actual data driven phase difference is very noisy, this is like this. The theoretical one, when you unwrap, it's just a straight line, beautiful straight line. Um, so this is very noisy. So when, if you unwrap this, Sometimes, because of the noise, it can go like bizarre like this. So when, when you do that modulations, you actually pull this point closer to the candidate angle, and um, and then you calculate that distance, and that turned out to be like extremely powerful for like when you do um, plus and minus ninety degree, so one hundred and eighty angle. Um, yeah, but. The issue is like, will that still hold, will that trick still hold for plus and minus 180 or 360 degree? When now for every, so, so the, the phase difference is the same, the space of the phase difference is still from minus pi to pi, that doesn't increase. But now the, the angle that you want to resolve double, so this is one sample um, theoretical phase difference um, when you do um, 360 degree, so they are both closely spaced 
much more than this. So at, here at high frequency, you have much more resolution different between different angle, incoming angle. Um, <clears throat> so one of the tricks that um, I try is to do unwrapping phase partially. So I don't do one full unwrapping across frequency or frequency point. Um, but you pick some, um, some constant, some, something that you're going to like, optimize. That's going to need to be optimized. But you just pick some number, and then um, you unwrap around up to that frequency only, and then you restart every time. Um, the idea is to avoid accumulate error that's going to throw off this, this um, data-driven phase. Um, and this might, might look weird at first, but this is what makes everything um, make, make my demo, I guess. Um, so now to the evaluation part. So, so that's the two, two tricks that I use. One is the partial unwrapping phase, the other is the incorporation of the magnitude. And let's see how, like, whether these two tricks are going to help and, or hurt. Um, before going to evaluations, I have to go through the data set that we have. And this is, like, enormous thanks to the product team that have provided me with this data. So I have data from a linear four element Kinect array. I have data from a circular A element directional microphone. Same thing for A element um, omni direction, omni directions. And also data from a front to back two element microphone. And here's the setup that um, I will show how the data was recalled. So you have um, a table in the middle of the room with a microphone array on the table. You have four loudspeakers on four corners to try to create surround, um, emulate surround noise. Um, you have a move, movable sound source that's going to play um, the, the speech, the actual signal. That's going to be movable and to create different angle. And, and this is recorded in um, non anechoic rooms at different SNR. So it's, it's real data, it's not synthesized, synthesized data. Um, so given this data, we're going to gun run through some processing pipeline. And this is the processing pipeline that I use. This is part of the uh, audio, MSR audio processing pipeline, where I make use of the AEC, Acoustic Echo Cancellations block. Um, this is my main block that's going to split out what, what, this is my main project. The goal is to split out this, given it coming um, signal that uh, have ac acoustic echo cancel. Um, this reference is coming from, reference signal is coming from the speaker file. That's going to be used by this block. Um, I also make use of the voice activity detector further down the chain. Uh, the previous state of this PAD, um, and the reason is that the additional term that I'm, I'm relying on to suppress reverberations, uh, reflections. Yeah, so the evaluation criteria that I have are absolute angle error, where you just take, the, take what I compute sum over all frequency, um, just to uh, um, marginalize out the noise in the frequency domain. Um, so, so this term is going to be depending on the theta and the hypothesis one only. Um, and I'll pick the maximum angle, and that's going to be compared against in absolute distance against the theoretical one. Um, the next one that I have is the, the true, what I call true probability mass. Is that because I, I compute this probability so after I sum over frequency again, just like the last step, um, I, can, I can take the, the, the amount of mass that falls within epsilon plus minus epsilon of the ground truth angle. And that's going to be my criteria. The last one I want to show is the execution time, normalized execution time. Um, because the execution time is computed in MATLAB, so it doesn't make sense to show the, the actual number. So I'm just going to show the normalized versions to compare the runtime between algorithms. So here the first set of results. Um, <clears throat> this is the first criteria, absolute angle error. Um, and these are the different um, algorithms that we have. So the violet is going to be IDO8. The blue is IDO8 too. The science is GCC fan. Um, green is ballet. Orange is music. And then yellow is NPDR. Um, the y-axis is um, angle error, absolute angle error, AAE. So there's not much we can see from this, but besides the fact that IDOA2 over all four configurations, over all SNR, 
actually do not very bad, like quite close to Empedia, um, quite close to Ballet too, better than music. Um, so let's practice out further to see what else can we see. So let's practice into four, four graphs. Um, so the first one up here is for the, the Kinect, this guy over here, linear four element array. Um, I, I know there's a lot of information, but let, let's just focus on one at a time. Let's just this buffer and then we go through the, all of them. Um, so for this one, you see between the algorithms, like IDO8 twos work pretty close to IDO8 one, um, and the angle is pretty good, like less than 15 degree, I believe. Yeah. Um, and pretty much everyone's performed well on this, on this data set. Um, and this is Irish over all um, SNR. So, um, yeah, so that's not much, of, nothing surprised about that, I guess. Now, now if we go to uh, eight elements um, omnidirectional, you see that like, this is the IDO8 2 significantly improved IDO8 1. Um, and this is the, the, the phase noise issue that I talked about. So, when you do the modulation to pull the, the, the noisy point far away, closer, and then compute the distance, um, you can, the wrong angle can also do the same thing. So not only the true angle can pull the point closer, but the wrong angle can also point. So you, you're gonna see like this high error is because you have the, the sometimes you get the correct angle, but the other times you get the one that is very far away and I wish, oh, I reach over all different data session, recording sessions, then you get high error. Um, this phase um, unwrapping things, um, partial phase unwrapping things, have reduced that error from IDOA to, um, to here. Um, and one thing to like, as a sanity check is that GCC FAT gonna be like, gonna be rock in these configurations just because it's meant to be like that. There's no, th this guy have no, um, significant magnitude difference. So GCC FAT gonna try them on this. Um, now if we go to the circular eight cardioid, di like directional microphone, you're gonna see the first thing is a sanity check is GCC FAT gonna fail um, miserably because it's, it's deliberately throw out the, the magnitude difference. Not even magn absolute magnitude, um, both absolute magnitude and um, magnitude difference. So MPDR and Barlet and um, work have like very good because they they have the data correlation matrix that keep the signal um, keep the signal power. Music actually throw away when when you do the subspace decompositions. Actually, it doesn't use the diagonal elements, so um, it it works, but not too bad. Um, and here um, the hypothesis that we have earlier is that. Um, incorporating magnitude would help. Um, so this kind of proof that that hypothesis is true because um, if it didn't, then we would perform pretty like as bad as GCC FAT or something. If, if the, the difference in magnitude didn't help. Um, so I, I find these two figures quite um, telling um, because they show first is that the phase unwrapping actually help compared to IDO wave one. And the second thing is incorporating the magnitude difference actually help compared to GCC FAT um, for this. For the front to back, we were hoping that like um, incorporating magnitude because they are, the two elements are very close together. We were hoping that incorporating magnitude will help. Um, and they, they actually did, but not very significant. And all methods pretty much perform poorly on this device configurations. Now let's, let's break down further into like different SNR to see if the story is still home. Um, and so different SNR, like higher, lower, the, the X axis are SNR, the Y axis, um, again, IAE, absolute angle error. <coughs> um, so you see here, like at high SNR, this is pretty much perfect. Everyone would love this. Um, the worst case is just 15 degree error. Um, and the story still hold like pretty much everyone perform around the same level. Um, for Omni, again, um, so GCC FAT is um, quite bad, but um, because again, IDOA is not, this is IDOA, IDOA 1 produce 
quite high error, but this is because it's just random chance when, when you do the 250. You actually pick out some of the signal in the right angle, but because it's also pick out other things. I do way to fix that problem. And same here, GCC um, fat high um, error. Incorporate magnitude difference help. Um, this kind of help a little bit. So oh, question. I can, yeah, um, go on. Is your estimation output like 36 degree or just 0 to 180? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, so for this one, um, for the linear Kinect, um, I, I assume that like nobody going to stand behind the Kinect and talk. So I, I do the 180 degree, the front. For all other one, the evaluations for, for 360. So uh, I assume that uh, this absolute angle of error is an average of multiple tests. Sessions. Yeah. So what does <coughs> average 90 degree error means here? Um, yeah, that's, that's a very good one too. Um, so pretty much all, all files gonna produce error around that. It doesn't mean that the error is skewed over to a certain angle or something. So they, they are pretty much around the same thing. That, that's certain bias towards zero because if you know nothing, then IDOA2 tend to produce um, zero, have higher weight because, um, uh -oh. Yeah, just because they, the zero, um, sorry, it tend to buy us toward and whatever angle that is, have um, zero phase magnitude difference. But other than that, um, the error is pretty much uniform. Yeah, does that answer your questions? I need to think about it. It's not a deviation, it's mean of the error. Right. So right. If, if it's like, a, if it was like the, the range of like 0 to 180, then mean of 90 degree is like a probably uniform distributed. But then it's 36 degrees, so I need to think about what it means about like the average 90. So, yeah, so when, when, when you have like, um, let, let, let me get to the, the, the part when you have like the, the actual plot, with the actual pictures when you have okay. phone 360. Yeah. So um, now let's look at the... Just for a sec, so the front back, which has the largest arrows, mm -hmm. it's one subcategorate point, pointing on the back and one subcategorate pointing to the front. And the distance is a couple of millimeters. Mm -hmm. Not much phase difference, plus the microphone, there is no way to tell are you on the left or on the right side. The best we can hope is we can distinguish the three states from back and side. I see. But that's 90 degrees. That makes sense then, <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. There is no way to go more precise than that. Okay. Yeah, I guess answer just, I want to answer my question, your questions. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so now we look at something different. So picking the max cap like um, shady, um, I mean not shady, but like does not capture everything. So what what about um, T TPM like true property mass? So again, let's just look at the aggregate air, um, true property mass first. And in this case, higher is better. So it's the reverse of the other work case. Um, the colors for the angular mass still the same. So higher is better. Seems like GCC fat do pretty well overall, right? Um, and like um, everything else just kind of, so these two do pretty well too. But I'm, I'm surprised because GCC factor way the phase difference and um, the, the magnitude different, the magnitude information and was able to do high. So let, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Um, is this saying that it prefers peakier distributions? Is that basically what Yeah, I, I was about to go to breakdown and then we, 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 we will see that. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, ju just a uh, conclusion. Uh, Bartlett, which is like the steel response power, right? Uh, music and then PBR, uh, they all use the data covariance matrix. Music seems to be doing considerably worse than any of the other two, also in the, your previous examples. Right. Why, why is that? So, um, so mu 
I, 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 yeah. So music also throw away the magnitude information you buy done. Because it's, when it do the eigen value decomposition, it's going to keep the, the eigenvector that corresponding to the strongest eigenvalue. Um, so, when, and, and when, like, the, the whole definition of... Uh, oh, the definition of music is like, um, you do this because you hope that the signal the the signal subspace and the noise subspace are going to be orthogonal. It doesn't carry any like um, information about. It doesn't try to compute the signal power like Ampedia. So it treats reflection reverberation the same as signal. So and and reflections can be very far away from the the true the true direct path signal. You buy that. Um, so. This actually compute the, the, the signal power, the, the angle that has the most signal power. And that also implies that like the direct path is going to be way stronger than the reflect and the reverberations. So sorry, maybe I missed uh, something. So in these examples you presented, you had, uh, that had a strong source included plus reflections in the results you, you showed. Yeah, the data set have everything, the real data. OK, OK. Have yeah. Reflection, reverberation, reverberation, noise. Thanks. Yep. Music was designed for localization of sources using antennas, which yeah. means well less noise, well better matching of the channels, way less reverberation. And actually, it works quite well in acoustics if you are one meter away. That's fine. Low reverberant environment, fine. From the moment you have more reverberation of noise, it just collapses. But yeah. in antenna race, it's considered ulti the ultimate sound uh, uh, source localization algorithms. Well, yeah. yeah. We can talk a lot about this, but I believe that, now, now I come to believe that this, so you, you divide one over that term in music, and you expect that term to be zero and then produce a very sharp peak. But that, sh that sharp peak sh theoretically should go to infinity, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, like it, it doesn't mean like this is signal power, this is how strong the signal is. It just oh, means yeah, that. Exactly yeah, yeah. And, and I, 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 something I learned is that that is actually very important when you do localizations, because you don't want to localize reverberation and reflections. Um, yeah, so if you break down the error, then what you see is that um, um, so this uh, percentage, the how, how much property mass that fall into the right region within epsilon of the ground two angle, and that epsilon in my case is defined to be five degree. Um, pretty much everyone doing pretty good about the same thing here, up here. Um, Twenty like one four of the mass fall into the right region, re region, on average. Overall, uh, SNR. Um, so GCC fan, as, um, as you know, produce very sharp peak when it actually met the uh, assumption. Um, the model actually fit the, uh, the reality. Um, then that's why it produced a very high, um, put a lot of mass into the right region. And that's the reason why on average, you see it pick out in the previous slide, this guy. Um, not so well for directional microphone. Um, here, one that account for magnet, signal, um, signal magnitude, signal power is going to be tried. Um, we do pretty poor in here, but because this guy actually account for magnitude, so it's every, everyone is poor, this guy is least poor. Can so, go yeah. back to the slides you showed the uh, overall, like average arrow for yep. what, these four types? Mm -hmm. For back almost. Uh, maybe one more slice. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, DOA2 has an average angle arrow of like 10 degrees, but uh, what is? Yeah, cardio, cardio. Right. And uh, if we go to that uh, true angle probability, there is only 4% falling within 5 degrees. Right. 
that means it has a very narrow right. end. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is the deficiency of like um, IDOA2. It's that it's not very like picky. Um, but remember about the sub 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 max tricks that I mentioned earlier. When 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 you normalize, you can actually trade off for how much you want the peaks to be sharp, and how how you want whether you want to see the other side side um, directions. Um, so I can actually go back. So I believe if you optimize for this angle, you can put you can make idea way to, to put more mass into just like this. You just change this free degree of freedom to okay. put more mass in. I just didn't um, put much effort into like trying to make it sharp. Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's, that's a very good catch though. I, I almost forget to mention that. Um, yeah, and if you break it down further in, across S and R, um, then the, the, the stories still remain true. Um, you see this guy drive, this is not very good. This does not put a lot of mass in um, at the right place. Um, but overall, like, the two hypotheses that we want to test is incorporating magnitude does help. Um, and um, yeah, this, this is not, not good enough. So now, now let's go to execution times. This is the, one of the most important things that's been driving me to develop this simple model that supposedly work well from a lot of configurations. Um, so this is again, this is a, a very big picture. You see music costs a lot up due to the eigenvalue decompositions. Um, the matrix inversions quite consume quite a lot. Um, normalized, this is, um, so the y-axis is normalized, normalized execution time um, on net, that's how I call. So maximum is gonna be one, everything's gonna be less than one. So IDOA2 does increase some computational times. Um, but not too much, still less than the other method. If we break it down into f the number of channels, so these two microphones have the same number of channels, so computational cost will be the same. So I group both of them together. Um, these have four elements, they have two channels, two elements. Um, so pretty much the thing is still whole, except this is the mistake uh, in the evaluation that I had, and Ivan caught this. So this is also include the initialization time, and for the two elements, there's not much like online computations. But because we, we share, both share the fixed initialization time, so this is why they're, they're pretty much the same. Um, but I guess it will be useful to see that like IDOA is not magic. There's some initialization time costs associated with that too. But if you, um, so, something like require more channel, have more channel require more processing online, then overall the initializations are gonna be marginalized out and you're gonna see the performance um, in terms of net or execution time. Um, so again, I... Can you show one slide back? Go ahead. So two, four, and eight channels. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see normalize it, let's say one to be eight channels and to see those algorithms as function of the number of channels. It would be nice to know how they scale up. Is this linear with the number of channels, uh, or quadratic, right. or yeah. forbid third or fourth order? Uh, uh. Yep. Yeah, I should have done that. That's a very good point too. Um, so um, again, to um, the, 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 I have no proof in my presentations, but I have a, a demo video um, that gonna both gonna try to back up my use of a simple model and um, try to replace a proof. So we have, we, we did a live demo the other day. Yeah. Okay, now. Hello, today is August 18, uh, 2015. So um, this is the angle, um, incoming angle. So for, for the Kinect, it's just from minus 90 to 90. Um, this is a long frequency. Um, this is me. Ivan gonna show up some point around here, go to here, and then go here. So, um, so me talking is 45 degree, pretty much around here. And then you, you should expect to see something um, pop up when I want to start talking. Um, and then it's move, gonna move around here and then go to here. Um, no, what, what? The angles are inverted. <laughs> Left on the video is right on the, try to flip the video. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
also, yeah, um, there's a slight out of sync between the, the upper video and the lower video. So, um, yeah, so look for the yellow pics when, when I want, uh, around the time I want to start talking. So that would make it easier. Uh, my name is Lam Le, and I'm with my mentor, Ivan Tashev, here. One, two, three, testing, testing, testing. One, recovery. two, three, testing, testing. Um, one, two, three. Of our project, special probability. Hello, today is August 18, 2015. Two, my name is Long Le, and I'm, I'm one, here two, with three, my mentor, Ivan Tashev. We're here to do testing, testing. Testing. more of our project, special probability. Yep. So, the Kinect, probably you have already seen it, so it's not very surprising. Let's see the next one. Um, uh, can you replay that one again? I okay. want to see what happened when you well, walk from behind Kinect mm -hmm. to the front of Kinect. I didn't see it going over like 90 degrees. See. Hello, today is August 18, uh, 2015. Uh, my name is Lam Le, and I'm with my mentor, I want to here. One, two, three, testing, 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 one, recovery. two, three, testing, testing, um, one, two, three. Of our project, special probability. Hello, today is August 18, 2015. My name is Long Le, and I'm, I'm one, here two, with three, my mentor, testing, I want to share. We are here to do testing, more, testing. Here more of our project, special probability. <laughs> oh, did you get that? Or did you catch that? I didn't see it in the in the video, but uh, yeah, uh, we can we can talk about it offline. What I was anticipating is that uh, uh, when Ivan talks behind mm -hmm. the, Kinect, the reflection, maybe maybe it was like recognized at forty five degree uh, yes. or minus forty five degree. But when Ivan moves to the side of Kinect, it should be like minus ninety degree. But we didn't see minus ninety degree going up around oh. the time. Oh, so theoretically, yeah. if so, you have the linear array, if you have the linear array, you need to have only the direction of microphones, 10 degrees in this direction should be seen as 10 degrees here. Right. But those microphones are highly directional, so my guess is that once I go back, mm -hmm. the intensity of my voice is so yeah. low that you cannot, we cannot see it. In the, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, also, What's it's the it's sound it's source that we were listening to? Me. No, no, no. What, what, what microphone was listening to? What were we listening to here? Oh, the, the audio is the, from the camera. From, oh, so it's nothing to do with Kinect at all. It's nothing a to totally separate microphone. Absolutely right. yeah, separate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get, that, get back to that question for you later. Um, so now it's the Omni, um, Circular Eight Element Omni. Hello, my name is Tom Le, and today is August 15, August 18, 2015. Um, I'm with my mentor Ivan Tashev here to do a demo of our project, Spatial Probability. Hello, today one, two, three, is August testing, testing, one, two, three. 18, 2015. One, two, three, testing, my name testing. is Tom Le, and I'm here with my mentor one, two, three, testing, Ivan Tashev to testing, do a one, two, three, demo of our testing. Spatial Probability project. One, two, three, I'm the Hello. second resource. My name is so if you didn't catch that, um, I think there's a slight mismatch, like the, the pick star before you start talking. Um, do you want to play oh, that okay, again? Maybe yeah, would you like to, do you need to play that again? Or? No, it's, that's okay. okay. And finally, for this. Hello, today is August 18, 2015. My name is Long Le, and I'm here with my mentor, Ivan Tashev, to do a demo of our um, special one, two, three, testing, project. Testing, testing, testing. One, Hello, two, three. today is August one, two, three, 18, testing, 2015. Testing, one, two, three. My name is Long Le, testing, and I'm here testing, with my testing, mentor, one, two, three, Ivan testing, Tashev. Testing. We are one, here to three, do a demo testing, of our testing, pro special one, two, probability three. projects. One, two, three, testing, Hello. testing, testing. Today is August one, two, three, 18, testing, 18, testing. 2015. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, yeah, um, I'd like to thank first um, Ivan, because like, he's been very helpful with like, his advice and everything. He's been helping me a lot. Um, I came in without much like, audio experience, but like, he was able to like, just point out 
things. Like wh when I have a problem, I come to him in just five seconds. He solve it. Like pretty much tell me the cause. So that was amazing. Um, and I would like like um, to thank everyone in our groups for the cool chat about audios and non audio stuff too. Um, yeah. So everyone in our group is really great. Um, and also like huge thanks to you guys, product teams that was provide me the data, provide me insights about how to de debug the data. It's, like Jesse and Bernie are like, just been wonderful. So thank you guys. Um, and I put everyone in here um, in the product team. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Um, also, like the whole Microsoft um, research and Microsoft in general community is a, a wonderful community. Been the right summer for me. Yeah, great. You missed one. Yeah. The person who signed up for your internship and paid for it. Thomas. Thomas. Questions, colleagues. Yeah, questions, please. Um. So yeah. I actually had one question about the GCC FAT. Uh -huh. You showed how well it did on the 8 element Omni, but it didn't do well on the cardioid. Uh -huh. There should be just as much phase information in both of those, right? And if they were ideal cardioid elements. And so I was curious why you thought the GCC FAT did so poor hmm. on the circular cardioid. Yeah, that's actually very good questions. Um, Mostly noise in the back of the microphones. Your phase is so unstable there. You see, if you have a perfect cardioid shape, yes, there is no phase flips. But you have the magnitude going down 20 to 30 dB, and on top of that, the noise, the phase of the noise is added, and this is right performs. They, he cited a paper from three persons here in Microsoft Research working on the round table device. If you just you do two, two phases, first just roughly to see where is the microphone array, and then ignore the microphones which are facing with the back to the sound source, and boom, the precision jumps. So the back, is, and plus, if it goes and flips to even slightly super cardioid for the angle of the back, the, fa the phase is flipped to 180 degrees, which makes the things even more complicated. So do you may expect certain frequency ranges when you have a place flipped to 180 degrees and it's not cannot be modeled perfectly the, the flips. The uh, directivity pattern goes from subcardioid to cardioid, hypercardioid, and then backward. So um. unless you use measure of directivity patterns. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for my for that. Um so remember I mentioned about um there's a, there's actually this reference, this up. Oh, this paper yeah. here actually talk about how you should throw away phase for directional microphone, um, and I di I did that for all these method, but I didn't do that for the GCC fan. So you check for good phase response first before you admit it. I didn't do that for GCC fan. Um, so phase coming from the back microphones horrible. So yep. in the live demo, we see some interesting patterns along the frequency axis. Uh -huh. So I just wonder when you calculate the probability mass, do you take into account any frequency dependent factor instead of averaging through the whole the, the frequency axis? Right, so the smoothing along frequency axis is only for evaluations. Okay. Right, the output is still two dimensional things. That is um, over angle and frequency. Um, yeah, um, there's no attempt in trying to smooth out in the frequency domain um, because I, I would treat that as post-processing um, and I just focus on the single frame um, evaluation thing. You can always do some cap like smoothing um, post-processing later. Yeah. Go ahead, Akis. So another question because I probably missed something. Uh, so the stream vector in all your algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, was coming from a model array. You didn't have actual measurements of your devices, of your uh, true arrays. Uh, so you didn't have a measured steering vector that you would, uh, would probably improve the performance quite a lot. You just said, 
uh, approximately 8 omnidirectional microphones or uh, 8 ideal cardioid microphones uh, according to the specifications, which may have been a bit far from reality. So the, in, in the data that the, the, I, um, Jesse and Vanny shipped to me, there's information about the, the in the in X, Y coordinate, there's location of the microphone. So the model is more than just a circular eight element. So it's geometry and type of microphone. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so That's any the basic definition. Uh, it's, it's not something so generic. Sorry? It's not so generic, it's just circular eight. I, I just make, I just call it for sure. I know exactly how, how much, what is the distance between the microphone here to the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, for example, there is a, a body there, a scattering body that uh, will change quite a lot uh, the, direction, the directionality patterns of, of yeah. the sensors. They are okay. all assumed that ideal cardioid microphones, and they are definitely not. Yeah. And not only that, the directivity pattern changes with the right. frequency. Yeah. Uh, so, especially in these albums, I know that uh, an accurate description of the steering vector will make a big difference. So, they are quite sensitive to deviations of the steering vector. From reality mm -hmm. to the model, right? The the subspace methods in the uh -huh. MPDR, for example. Uh -huh. but yeah, at least from a product standpoint, we often can't rely on having those models steering vectors. So it's good to see how the IDOA two, by including magnitude, was so much more robust to those differences. Which was nice to see. Yeah, I can talk a lot more about things that I tried, like more complicated model that I try, um, and that's gonna take a lot of time. But turn out in the end, something simple, like the simplest things work robust. Be because you just make no assumption about everything, and the real work might seem to be very chaotic in this case. Can you show the slide with the angle error in degrees? Oh. OK, this one. So guys. Uh, in this particular case, Long is in an enormously unfavorable situation. He has to produce angle for every single frame, regardless of the magnitude of the human speech, and uh, regardless of the noise. This is why those numbers are relatively high. In the actual sound source localizer, from the moment we take this probability and see that there is no definite peak, we just throw away the frame. Then it goes to a clustering, so our sound source localizer is three, four, five degrees precision standard deviation. So it is enough reliable to point the beam to the direction of the sound source. But obviously, if you feed this whole selection and clustering engine with a better P of theta, we'll have better results after that. So this is why the angles looks enormously high. I'm pretty sure if you run this through our sound source localizer, the, those numbers will collapse to quite acceptable, quite acceptable levels. Yeah, and the quantization level is five degree. So this is too thick away. So 10 degree error might sound high, but quantizations for computational purpose. And thank you for that explanation too. You, have, you can do post-processing to improve these. Um, yeah, further. Any more questions? So let's thank our speaker. Thank you all. Uh, thank you.